What's up, everybody? Before we jump into the video, quick reminder, the new round of the Community Gallery is live on my website. The link is in the description. So there's a brand new 50 photographers with their work being showcased on my website right now. Definitely check it out after the video. This week, I thought I'd go out and take some nighttime photos. I figured it's been a while since I've gone out and shot photos at night. So I brought the Pentax 6x7, a roll of Porch 400, and kind of wandered around the Gig Harbor and Tacoma area looking for interesting compositions. <laughs> Treat a friend of flowers. I don't have any friends. Okay, first composition, the moon, which is moving, so I gotta hurry, but kind of right in between these two pillars, F4, uh, 25 seconds. So although this was my first photo of the night, it's actually probably one of my favorites. What makes this image for me is the way the left tower extends the very top of the frame. It creates an ominous feeling that someone is watching over us and that we're living in a world set in the future. I also like how the power lines lead towards the moon, which appears to be the sky's most prominent object. And you'll hear me talk about this more throughout the video, but you can't beat the color of the blue nighttime sky. All right, next, neighborhood. Really cool tower, the end of it, super dark. So I gotta shoot these low apertures. This is gonna be F4 at a minute and a half. I'm on a road right now, so hopefully no cars drive by. Well, if you couldn't tell, a car drove by on that last picture. It's like 20 seconds left. Tried to stop them, but I don't think they really understood what I was going for. I got more cars coming now. So I don't know, this picture might be a tough one to get. pulled into a location that has a bit more light to work with, which makes things much more convenient. I got an interesting composition with this street light and the moon up in the sky and kind of this fence and shrubbery in the foreground that's gonna be out of focus. It's gonna be about a minute long exposure at F4. At first, this picture didn't really jump out as anything special to me, but after I looked at it for a while, it actually grew on me. This is largely because of the foreground being out of focus and the relationship between the street light and the moon. The street light looks like a beacon summoning a foreign ship deep in the night sky, and the soft white light of the moon leaves the object's identity up for interpretation by the viewer. The fact that the street light is so far away and positioned behind a fence also gives the perspective of a group of teenagers who are watching these events take place from afar and are trying not to be caught by authorities. This image didn't turn out exactly the way I had planned, but I'm actually really pleased with the result. I'm right outside of an intersection looking down onto the freeway. Got a cool street light illuminating the road down there along with the moon in the sky. We got a minute 40 second exposure at F8. Getting a 20 second gap without cars is going to be a little bit difficult. composition I think. A little light on outside of the house with the American flag right below it and then a truck parked under the carport. My favorite part about this image is the dark shadows and natural contrast created by the single light source. The green bush in the foreground also adds perspective and depth and conveniently blocks out the Honda Pilot parked on the right side of the carport. Okay next one I got my eye on is uh, the house next door, kind of a Todd Heido type vibe. Uh, we got a window light on and a fence, grass in the foreground. Yeah, it's looking like it's gonna be probably about a minute and a half at F4. And I'm shooting a lot of these at F4 just because a lot of the scenes are quite dark. So I'm trying to bring the exposure time down a little bit. I really like the way this image turned out as well. The purple light inside the window heightens the viewer's wonderment of what is happening inside the house. 
And the way the fence cuts off half the window also alludes to the feeling that you're peeking over the fence trying to get a glimpse of what is going on. The deep blue sky with visible stars makes me feel like I'm on the set of Stranger Things. Compositionally, I like how the image is basically divided into thirds, grass in the foreground, fence, house, and trees in the midground, and then the sky taking up the majority of the background. All right, for the final image of the night, I ventured down to the beach. There's this really cool vessel out in the water right now, right under the moon, and the moonlight is kind of reflecting off the water, creating a really cool separation between the land in the backdrop and the craft that's out in the water. So I've done some exposure calculations, and it looks like I'll be able to get away with F4 at about six seconds, just due to all the reflective light off the water from the moon. So that's nice. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out. Uh, it just came, seems like a really eerie, very interesting looking image, so I thought I'd give it a try. So in order to really make this image work, I think I needed a higher vantage point in order to create enough separation between the vessel and the trees in the background. However, I do really like this crop of the photo as the colors along with the cloud texture creates a dreamy feel that works well with many of the other images I shot this night. The six second exposure created just enough motion blur to soften the moonlight and the clouds while not making them too blurry and abstract. I also love the smooth look that wide apertures give to direct light sources as opposed to the starring effect that smaller apertures give. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with a few of these photos. I like how they work in coherence with one another to kind of create this storyline consisting of space, aliens, and adventure. And I like the sci-fi element that the moon adds to a lot of the images. But my favorite part is definitely that rich blue tonality that you get when you shoot nighttime photography on film. When you bake the negative at the sky for six or more seconds, you get this rich, deep blue color that you can't even perceive with your own two eyes, but you get your scans back. And I mean, the vibrance just blows me away every time. And it's so cool that you can do it all in camera too, just by exposing the negative for a long period of time. You don't have to go into Lightroom and do any, you know, do a bunch of fancy adjustments or anything like that. And, you know, bring up the saturation a ton because it's just naturally there. Uh, it's one of my favorite aspects to shooting film at night for sure. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, friendly reminder, the new community gallery is live right now on my website. Link is in the description. Definitely check it out. 50 very talented photographers are showcasing their work right there right now. Uh, other than that, hope you guys are staying safe and healthy out there. And I'll catch you next week. Peace.